Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Actually, let me take a sip. Um, so this is a video I've wanted to make probably since 1997. I was a, uh, a sophomore, I think in high school, and uh, that was the first time I've actually ever seen a ham radio. And uh, one of the, uh, my classmates came in with a little handheld and he was showing it to um, the physics professor or the physics uh, teacher at the time. And he's like, yeah, this is a ham radio. Um, I just got licensed and uh, I wanted to show you something called auto patch. And uh, he basically keyed up and was able to make a phone call uh, to his dad. And I thought that was the most amazing thing I had ever seen. Um, what's interesting is for you, you guys who don't know what auto patch is, um, basically it's a mechanism whereby you can access um, the phone system through a uh, repeater. Um, and it was really popular uh, before the days of uh, cell phones uh, because it was really the only way to be able to communicate remotely with uh, a landline. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, for me, I live in an area where uh, we don't actually have any cell coverage where we're at, and the only way we're able to get internet access is through a uh, dish that sits on a roof, and that ha that goes out about two or three times a week, so we're dead in the water. But one thing we do have is we have the ability to uh, get into our local repeater on my VHF UHF handy talkie. Um, so I tried for the first time this morning. Uh, it took me two attempts, uh, and I was actually able to place a call. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, gentleman I was trying to make contact with, um, he wasn't there, but we went straight to his voicemail. So I'll show you that clip in a second. But um, one other thing I want to say before we drop today, um, I did receive a uh, handful of comments around uh, why do you need to get licensed? and uh, you know, in an emergency, you can just use the radio. And while the FCC allows for that in an emergency situation, in my opinion, what getting licensed gives you is the ability to understand how these radio work, how to program them, understand the protocol. And I don't know if you could do that without getting licensed because you can't practice that um, unless you are licensed or are in that emergency situation where uh, life or property is at threat. So I highly encourage everybody, um, if only to get in front of it, uh, get licensed, practice uh, this valuable skill. And uh, yeah, so with that said, guys, I'm gonna cut you over to the uh, the quick uh, auto patch tour. All right, guys, so this is uh, round two. We're gonna try to key up again and see if we can get auto patch to work. KT1RUN. That's a good sign, guys. So yeah, that other ham was right. I guess I just needed a really clear, um, clear signal. So if I can't get my uh, neighbor, uh, I think just getting. Hi, this is John. Sorry, I missed your call. Leave a message. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hey there, John. This is uh, the Tech Prepper just testing out Auto Patch. Uh, I think it's working fine, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just clear this call. KT1, are you in? All right, guys, so um, that was actually pretty cool. It would have been awesome if we got on the phone, but uh, as you can see, we were able to uh, make a call directly to a, a cellular phone with just my dual band uh, VHF UHF ham radio going through a repeater. So I'm going to call that a success. Um, auto patch may not be available in 
uh, your area or your repeater. So look around. I'm fortunate enough where our repeater still provides that service, even though most people don't use it anymore. Um, and there were a few issues I ran into. So initially it wasn't working for me uh, because I was trying to call my phone number and apparently our auto patch system only supports a whitelist of three area codes and my cell phone was not in it. That's why I'm actually calling a neighbor who is in with one of those three area codes. Uh, the other thing I've heard in the past is that um, there is the possibility uh, that you may require another key sequence uh, since AutoPatch did cost money and still does cost money to integrate with the phone system. Um, a lot of them are tied to clubs, so you may need to be a member of a club to get those codes. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, for me, it was a great success. And uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say here. Uh, this is what I get for not taking notes this morning. Oh, yeah. So real brain fart. Hold on, let me have another sip of coffee. So also keep in mind there are restrictions. Uh, this is over the clear, and that means that everybody who is uh, listening on this frequency can hear your conversation, so it's not private whatsoever. And also you shouldn't tie up the repeater. Um, our repeater is with the Arizona Repeater Association, and they have a three minute maximum uh, for calls like I just made, and then a 15 minute maximum for emergency calls. So just keep that in mind. All right guys, be strong, be safe, be prepared and thank you everybody for subscribing and all the wonderful comments. I'm really enjoying um, having this little community grow. All right, take it easy guys.